So this is the question. It says that someone of some mass m is moving at some speed v not as they're coming to the bottom of an incline, and um, and after going over this incline, um, they will be at a height h higher than ground level, right? Um, and it's uh, asking for coast of the hill, what is his speed when he repeats the top plateau? Okay, and it says assume friction is negligible. Oh, that's a, whenever a question says a friction is negligible, it's a, a keyword, or sometimes I call it code word, thing that energy is conserved. So you can use uh, conservation of energy which a lot of people uh, might have guessed anyway, but it, it, it's good to have that, um, it, it's good to have the statement explicitly that justifies our use of conservation of energy. So, yeah. so okay, so we are gonna use conservation of energy to do this question, at least the part A. And uh, when you are, and starting with the conservation of energy, we don't really have a rigid, Problem solving steps that uh, you know I recommend that you go through step one two three four like we don't really have that although you will see the steps that I go through each time uh, so let me just spell out those steps as I go through but different people might have different orders or different <laughs> priorities um, so whenever you are using conservation law strategy the very first thing you need to do is verify that. The quantity that you think is conserved is conserved. So here, me noting that friction is negligible is that step. Uh, okay, we do no friction, and we can say energy is conserved. Now, whenever you are using conservation law strategy, um, you it, you need to identify snapshots that are useful because what you are trying to do is you are trying to say that there's a conserved quantity, a quantity that doesn't change as some process is occurring and you are trying to use that fact to solve for other things that might be changing. So, so you need a description of your physical setup at more than one places. And uh, by saying that total energy or whatever other conserved quantity is same across those two snapshots, you are able to say other things. So here, I mean, my snapshots are rather um, clear, but I want to be explicit. So this is my snapshot one at the bottom of the hill. And this is my snapshot two at the top of the hill. Once you have that, then you start out with a statement that the conserved quantity did not change between the two snapshots. That the total energy in snapshot one is equal to the total energy in snapshot two. So um, when we say total energy, we are talking about total mechanical energy, kinetic energy, and potential energy. So let me uh, spell it out. So kinetic energy plus the potential energy at snapshot one is equal to kinetic energy and potential energy at snapshot two. Now, there are some things I can do here to make my problem solving simple. I can say that this height is y equals zero. Or I set up my height in such a way, height reference in such a way, that my potential energy in snapshot one can be considered to be zero. Then all I have to worry about is whatever difference in gravitational potential energy there is, that's gonna be in uh, P2. So, so okay, I think I have uh, everything I need to write things out. So for my initial kinetic energy, I say, one half m v naught squared and zero potential energy is equal to my final or snapshot two kinetic energy one half m v final squared and then my potential energy increases so it'll be plus m g h ah some things cancel my mass cancels so i don't actually need to know the mass of the guy i can just solve for vf here so solving for VF, uh, and in the interest of time, I'm just gonna do this algebra in my head. You can pause the video and double check the algebra I'm doing. So uh, my V final here should be um, V naught squared uh, minus 2GH square rooted. 
So, okay, let's just double check that that is correct. And then um, we'll do part B. So a squared minus two times g 9.8 times h 1.8. Um, I need to take square root of that, 5.36. Well, I probably should randomize this question in the future, not today. Um, so, the, so part A is pretty simple. Um, it's a, for part B that I want you to do this question. So in part B, it asks, uh, what is his speed when he reaches the upper level if this amount of frictional force acts? So we can no longer say that energy is conserved. And, but how do I say this in a correct way? So it is right that mechanical energy is no longer conserved. So no longer, uh, no more conservation of mechanical energy. But this is one of those situations where the idea of mechanical energy is still useful. Even though it's not conserved, there's um, enough of conservation remaining that you can use this as a, some kind of a starting point and modify it appropriately to be able to do this question. Uh, it comes down to thinking through, okay, what changes mechanical energy? Whenever you have a change of energy, you associate that with work done by something, somebody. So frictional force doing work is what changes energy. So what you can say is the however much this uh, total energy changed between snapshots one and two, all that ch change in of energy you can put all that change you can blame all the change onto one piece that you can express mathematically. And after you do that, you should be able to still work through it. So from the information given here, the frictional force, and uh, we conveniently know the displacement here, d, we can calculate how much, uh, the, we can calculate the magnitude of work being done by frictional force. It's going to be the friction force times the magnitude of displacement. Technically, does negative work because friction force points opposite to the displacement. Um, I, I think I'm just going to try to write this out intuitively. So I have total energy one here. And uh, as I think about total energy two, it's going to be smaller than total energy one. And the amount that it's smaller by is going to be this amount, magnitude of work done by friction force. So I just add this portion to the right-hand side of the equation, and this equality is now valid again under the conditions described in B. So with this change, I can go through the remainder of the calculation. I can say, all right, I still have this work done by, or something that relates to work done by friction force. And then um, on this part, I have, oh, you know what? I don't think I can cancel out mass anymore. So, okay, let me undo that bit of algebra because I can't do that anymore. Um, I have plus friction force times D. And by the way, there are other ways to set up equation like this. Uh, you could also set up equation like work done is change of energy. Uh, you can do that um, here since I started out with a conservation of energy setup, I thought I would just take the existing equation and modify it a little bit. So yeah, and here I need to now solve for the V final and it's just gonna be a slightly more tedious algebra because uh, I can't cancel out mass. So let me do this in a bit of a steps. So let me first solve for a one half MV final. Um, I'm gonna write it down here. One half MV final squared is equal to, collect everything else on the other side, one half M between the squared minus mgh minus friction force times displacement. Now I can say, take all of this, multiply two over m, and then take the square root. 
don't think uh, this whole thing really simplifies all that much. So I'll just uh, plug in the numbers as it is. Um, if uh, there were some meaningful way this would simplify, I would, but it doesn't. So um, 0 0.5 times a mass, 110 times V0, 8 squared minus mass, 110 times 9.8 times height 1.8 minus friction force 80 newtons times 8 meters for the uh, distance along the slope and um, I think that's all that's all the quantities in the parentheses so let me say equals um, and then uh, multiply by 2 divided by the mass 110 that's the quantity under the square root so now let me do the square root uh, 4.13 meter per second and when you compare that to the number before hey it's smaller so it makes a sense at least it doesn't sound unreasonable and uh, and here it says it's right